welcome everyone uh, in this session today we are going to discuss about venn diagrams which again is very interesting right it has it has really got you know uh, you know you need to think about uh, the question before you mark the answer right some reasoning is required for you to arrive at the correct answer and and at times even general knowledge is required to answer questions from venn diagrams however it's not uh, complex right it is very easy and i'm sure you can solve such questions in just 5 to 6 seconds not more than that now venn diagram is basically a geometrical a geometrical representation right uh, it is uh, also known as set theory of course we have uh, discussed covered this topic of set theory as well through our videos but then here it is uh, different from what we have done in the topic of set theory right generally in this section we you know deal with those questions which test your ability to relate a given set of items uh, diagrammatically all right some group of items are given to us we need to see which of the answer options which have got venn diagrams in it diagrammatically represents the given set of items all right now basically it's like you know identification of classes through circle or through numbers and letters two types of questions are asked here we'll discuss both the types so let's start with the first one all right so here we have the first question it says which of the following figures represent the relationship among sun moon and molecule now understand if if you are aware sun and moon are all made up of molecules right sun is all made up sun is made up of molecules moon is also made up of molecules so which of the options do you see correctly resemble or correctly show the uh, relationship between the given objects right the three objects given to us are sun right there is sun moon and molecule now you know that sun and moon both are made up of molecules right so i can say that you know there is this category which shows molecules let's say molecules are shown in blue right this is molecules right and inside this we have sun because sun is made up of molecules right so sun is a uh, subset of molecules right sun is a subset of molecules and this is sun right what is shown in yellow is sun and then moon right uh what is shown in gray here is moon moon is also made up of molecules and the important points which you need to understand is can there be any overlapping between sun and moon no there cannot be any overlapping between sun and moon because sun and moon are disjoint right there is nothing common between that right so sun and moon are disjoint so sun and moon should not overlap and both of these should be a part of larger category which is molecules so which options which of the answer option correctly shows that option 3 Yes or no? So the correct answer for this question has to be option three. Are you able to follow? Option one, two, and three do not show it, right? Option four says that you know you find three different circles in option four. So what does it mean? Sun, moon, and molecule. All three are different. So can you say that all three are disjoint? Let's say this is sun. Second one is moon, and the third one is molecule. Or any order there it does not matter. Now if you if you say that option four is the correct answer, what are you trying to say? You are trying to say that sun and moon are disjoint from molecules. But you know that sun. is made up of molecules moon is also made up of molecules so you cannot say that they are no way connected to each other there has to be an overlapping between sun and molecules and moon and molecules so option 4 gets eliminated likewise if you look at uh, you know option 2 right option 2 you may say that okay the middle one is molecules right the first one is sun and the third one is moon so how is this wrong option 2 also seems to be correct because there is an overlapping between molecules and sun there is also an overlapping between molecules and moon and sun and moon are not connected to each other yes but the important point to be understood here is the remaining part of the sun is made up of what even this is made up of molecules the remaining part of moon is made up of what even that is made up of molecules yes or no because the complete sun is made up of molecules complete moon is made up of molecules so that is the reason option 2 though satisfies some of the conditions right like we know that sun and molecule should overlap moon and molecule should overlap so both that are satisfied in option 2 and there should not be any overlapping between sun and moon so you can one way say that option 2 is correct but what is wrong here is the uh, you know uh, exterior part of sun and moon which is not overlapping with anything right what is shown by question mark here so hence option 2 also gets eliminated and option 1 anyway doesn't make any sense there right because you know you are you cannot touch sun and moon right if you observe option 1 all three are touching each other externally but sun and moon cannot touch right i mean there is no point so option 1 gets eliminated all right anyway need not go for elimination you can clearly understand that option 3 is the correct answer 
All right, here comes the next one. Which one of the following diagrams best represents the relationship among Delhi, Lucknow, and Uttar Pradesh? Now, what do you see? See clearly, you know that Delhi and Uttar Pradesh are two different states. So we should have two different circles representing them, right? One is Delhi, let's say this is Delhi, and the second one is Uttar Pradesh, right? These two are two disjoint sets. You cannot have any overlapping between them. Now look at the third object here, right? The third uh, item given to us, right? Which is Lucknow. Now Lucknow is a part of Uttar Pradesh. Lucknow is the capital of Uttar Pradesh. Now that's why I said general knowledge is required. You need not know that Lucknow is the capital of Uttar Pradesh, but you should at least know that Lucknow is a part of Uttar Pradesh, right? Lucknow is a city in Uttar Pradesh. Someone who doesn't know where Lucknow, you know, whether Lucknow is a part of Uttar Pradesh or not, he may go wrong. Are you able to follow? Now, now that Lucknow, we know that Lucknow is a part of Uttar Pradesh, it should come inside it. We can say this is Lucknow. So this is the correct diagram, right? So which is the one here? Option three again. Yes or no? We can say the exterior one is Uttar Pradesh. What we have inside is Lucknow, and the other one is Delhi here. All right. Now, had there been a city which is neither a part of Delhi and nor nor a part of Uttar Pradesh, then there should be three disjoint sets. You know, three different circles which do not touch at all. For example, let's say Delhi, uh, Mumbai, and Uttar Pradesh. So Delhi and Uttar Pradesh are two different states, so they should not overlap with each other. Mumbai again is a city which is not a part of any of these states, so it should be again a different circle. So in that case, we would say option two is the correct answer. But here, since Lucknow is a part of Uttar Pradesh, we should go for option three. So very simple topic. You just need to understand the relationship among the given objects and find out which is the correct diagrammatic representation of the uh, relationship between those objects. Next one here. Again, the same question, which one of the following diagram represents the correct relationship among day, week and year? And I'm sure this is very, very simple. Option one has to be the correct answer. Why is it so? Because day is a part of week, right? Day is completely inside week and week is completely inside year. So if the exterior most one is year. All the weeks are inside years, right? All the weeks are inside years and all the days are inside weeks. So answer has to be option one, right? You cannot say option two is the correct answer or three or four there. Of course, uh, in one way you can say that, you know, let's say this is weeks and this is days and the exterior one is years. So you can say that yes, weeks is a part of years, days also a part of year. So that way option three is correct. But where is it going wrong? Every day is a part of week. So whatever we have here days should completely be inside weeks. So because of that option three is wrong. Option four anyway makes no sense because we cannot have uh, disjoint sets when it comes to days, weeks and years, right? Everything is correlated. There. Option four eliminated. Option two again eliminated because see, let's say if this is year, this is week and this is days you say, there is only a little overlapping between years and weeks. But we know that all the weeks should be inside years. And again, there's a little overlapping between weeks and days, but all the days should be inside weeks. Hence, two is also eliminated, right? So that kind of reasoning you must uh, you know, go for and try to find out what the correct answer is. Simple one, option one is the correct answer. Look at the next one. What are the uh, objects given here, items given here? Human beings, interesting question, human beings, teachers and graduates. So which diagram correctly represents the relationship among human beings, teachers and graduates? Now, clearly, all the teachers are human beings. I mean, no doubt about it. All the teachers are human beings. Good or bad is a different story, right? Don't go in that direction. But all the teachers are human beings. And all the graduates are also human beings. Are you able to follow? So we can say that human beings is the superior most set here, right? This is human beings, let's say. Teachers must be inside human beings. Graduates should also be inside human beings. So let's say this circle here shows teachers. Are you able to follow? All the teachers are human beings. All the teachers are human beings. All the graduates are also human beings. Now you have to draw graduates also inside human beings. But the question that arises is, should there be an overlapping between teachers and graduates? Yes, because some graduates can be teachers or other ways you can say some teachers can be graduates. So I can say this should be graduates. So this overlapping between teachers and graduates show that some teachers are graduates or some graduates are teachers and both teachers and graduates are human beings. So which option satisfies that? Option one here. Are you able to follow? Right? And again, you know, don't go by quotations like, you know, we say that experience is the best teacher. So experience is not a human being, right? 
So you can say that teachers, all the teachers are not human beings because experience is also a teacher. Experience should be outside human beings. Or sometimes you say, you no, know, nature is a good teacher, right? So nature again is not a human being, right? So don't don't go by that. Simple, try to establish relationship between human beings, teachers, and graduates. Again, you may say that uh, every teacher should be a graduate. No, you know, let's say, you know, teacher, teacher need not be a graduate, right? Or all the graduates need not be teacher, right? Some graduates are teacher, other graduates may go for other professions. So the best one which shows the relationship among human beings, teachers and graduates is option one. All right. Now here we have got judge, thief and criminal, right? So establish the relationship between judge, thief and criminal. Now go by these words, right? Thief. Thief is a criminal. Yes, thief is a criminal, right? He has committed a crime, so he's a criminal. But is criminal a thief? No, a criminal need not be thief. You understand? Every thief is a criminal. But every criminal is not a thief. Yes or no? There are different types of crimes, right? Theft is one of them, right? Stealing something is a crime. Again, a murderer is also a criminal, but murderer is not a thief, right? Likewise, you can uh, take up various other examples. So the point which I'm trying to make here is every thief is a criminal, but every criminal is not a thief. So it's like, you know, all thieves are criminals. How do you draw all A's are B's? Syllogism, right? All A's are B's. A should be completely inside. Again, don't go for possible diagrams here. The basic diagram. So we can say if this is thief, this has to be criminal because every thief is a criminal, right? All thieves are not criminals. Sorry, all criminals are not thieves, but all the thieves are criminals. So that's about thieves and criminals. Now look at judge. Judge. Judge has to be disjoint from the other two because judge cannot be a criminal, right? Judge cannot be a thief. Now don't go by real life uh, examples, right? Don't say that I know so and so judge who is a thief or so and so judge who is also a criminal, right? A judge is not supposed to be a criminal, right? He's not supposed to be a criminal. Hence, judge and criminal should not overlap, right? These two are disjoint. No judge is a criminal. No criminal is a judge or no judge is a criminal and then all thieves are criminals. So how do you draw that basic diagram? This is all syllogism, right? One way it is like uh, trying to represent the given statements using syllogism. Here statements are not given, here words are given, but you can make statements out of it, right? When you look at thief and criminal, the uh, definite statement that we can say is all thieves are criminals. Yes or no? Definite. All thieves are criminals. So how do you draw all thieves are criminals? Like we have drawn here. And then judge and criminal. No judge is a criminal. How do you draw no judge is a criminal? Like we have drawn here, right? No judge is a criminal. So which option satisfies this? Option three. Yes or no? Two circles, one inside the other. And then there is a other one. So option three is the correct answer. Here comes the next one. Which diagram correctly represents the relationship between politicians, poets and women? Politicians, poets and women. Now this is interesting. Which is the relationship? Which diagram correctly shows the relationship between politicians, poets and women? See, try to connect the different given uh, professions or different objects here. Can politicians be poets? Can politicians be poets? Yes, politicians can be poets. Can women be politicians? Yes, women can be politicians. Can women be poets? Yes, women can be poets. So what do you see? Every object here is connected to every other object. Politicians can be poets. Politicians can also be women or women can be politicians. Likewise, poets can be or women can be poets. Are you able to follow? So if, if you really look at it, we have relationship between every two possible pair there, right? Poets can be politicians or politicians can be poets. Women can be poets and women can also be politicians. So everything is connected. There should be an overlapping between all, uh, all the different possibilities. And also we can say that, <coughs> also we can say that all three will also overlap. All the three given objects can also overlap. Yes or no? Because a woman can be a politician and poet at the same time, right? So the correct diagram which shows the relationship between all the three here is option number one. Let's say this is politicians. This is poets and here is women. So you see that, you know, uh, poets are politicians. This is the shading, right? Then uh, you see that poets are women. This is the shading. Then you see that uh, uh, women are politicians. This is the shading. And then you also see that 
uh, you know, all uh, some women are poets as well as politicians. This is the shady, right? So everything is shown in figure number one. So figure one or answer option one is the correct answer, right? Anyway, if you go by remaining options, if you want to go by elimination, you can clearly say that option two is ruled out because here you are saying that women, politician, and poets are disjoint. Is it correct? No, because there can be some poets who are po politician. There can be some politicians which are women. So option two is eliminated. Option three, what is it trying to depict, right? Or option three, what is it trying to show? It's saying that two of the given are a part of a larger one there, right? For example, if you say, you know, woman, exterior one is woman, then inside we have politicians as well as poets. So some politicians can be poets and then politicians inside women and poets also inside women. But the point here is, if you take option three as the correct one, you are saying that all the politicians are women. But is it correct? No, all the politicians are not women. And you're saying that all the poets are women. Is that correct? No. So that way option three is eliminated. Or you can try out other combinations as well, but makes no sense there. And option four anyway is wrong because option four is showing overlapping between only, let's say if this is one, two and three, overlapping between one and two is shown, overlapping between two and three is shown. But overlapping between one and three is not shown, right? We know that everything is connected here. So there should be overlapping between any two of them. So one and three are not overlapping. Here and the option four is ruled out. So very simple answer is option one. So let's look at the next type of questions from Venn diagrams. See what it says. In the following figure, circle represents hardworking, triangle represents sincere, and rectangle represents intelligent. Find out the hardworking who are intelligent but not sincere. Now this is similar to what we have done in the topic of set theory, right? What do we do in set theory? Each category is represented with the same type of uh, geometric figure that is a circle, right? How do we solve questions on set theory? We use a circle to represent uh, represent every category. For example, let's say there are sincere people, hardworking people, and uh, intelligent people. Each of them will be represented using a, using a circle, right? Let me explain to you here. So let's say this is uh, sincere, this is hardworking, and this is intelligent, right? And then we say that this portion shows sincere as well as hardworking. This portion shows since uh, hardworking as well as intelligent, this shows sincere as well as intelligent, this shows all sincere and hardworking and intelligent, this is only sincere, this is only hardworking, this is only intelligent. Right? And we know how to answer those questions, right? We know what region represents what. Right? In fact, this complete leaf shows sincere as well as hardworking. This is only sincere and hardworking. This complete leaf shows hardworking and intelligent. This is only hardworking and intelligent. This complete leaf shows this is all sincere and intelligent, but this portion shows only sincere and intelligent, but not hard. So we have learned all this uh, in the topic of set theory there, right? But in this case, every uh, object is used, is represented using a different geometrical shape. For example, like you see in the question, it says circle represents hardworking. So this is hardworking, right? Circle. Triangle represents sincere, right? So the triangle here is for sincere. And uh, right triangle represents sincere, and the rectangle represents intelligence. So this is intelligent. So instead of using the same geometrical shape, we are using different geometrical shapes, and we need to find out a particular uh, category there. Right? What do we have to find out? Find out the hardworking who are intelligent but not sincere. So hardworking and intelligent both, but they should not be sincere. So what do we do? Combination of hardworking as well as intelligent. Now try to understand what is the combination of hardworking as well as intelligent. See, hardworking is circle, intelligent is rectangle. What is the combination of these two? The combination is as shown by the highlighted portion. Yes or no? That means the overlapping of sincere as well as hardworking. You're able to follow. Let me right. What we are looking for is the combination of hardworking as well as intelligent. Now hardworking is the circle, intelligent is the rectangle. So what is the combination here? The overlapping between circle and rectangle. Do that overlapping between circle and rectangle. This is it, right? Overlapping between circle and rectangle. But then they should not be sincere, right? Hardworking and intelligent, but not sincere. What is sincere? The triangular portion is sincere. So triangular portion is sincere means they should not be considered, right? Whatever is sincere should not be considered. So we'll remove this. So what is left? Only the shaded portion is left. What is that shaded portion showing? Two. Yes or no? This is the region that we are referring to. So our answer for this question has to be two, two, which is given in option two there, right? So if you look at it, this two 
is a part of circle it is a part of rectangle but is not a part of triangle there are various way to look at it right we can say that since we are looking for hard working and intelligent it should be common to both circle as well as rectangle but since it the person should not be sincere it should not be common to triangle so anything which is between circle and rectangle but not triangle is two so our answer for this question is two very very easy right explanation is not required here uh, because we have already solved questions on set theory which is quite similar to this in fact they are even more complicated there we actually have to find out uh, fill the values also here values are already given right of course these are simple numbers but very very easy to crack okay so let's look at the next question it says in the given diagram circle represents professionals so circle is professionals square represents dancers so very square this one right this represents dancers okay triangle represents musicians so triangle is musicians and rectangle represents europeans so this is europeans right so just mark what each of them means right so circle is professors triangle is musicians uh, the rectangle is europeans and the square that we have inside is dances now different regions in the diagram are numbered 1 to 11 so there are different regions from each of the regions have been given a particular number from 1 to 11 we have to find out who among the following is neither a dancer nor a musician but is a professional and not a european so who among the following is neither a dancer nor a musician but a professional but a professional and not a european so it should not be a dancer it should not be a musician it should not be a european but it should be a professional are you able to follow so we are basically focusing on professionals here right try to work on professionals right find out professionals but these professionals should not be dancers should not be musicians and should not be europeans right now professors is what circle right professor is shown with circle so let me highlight uh, the complete uh, region there right professors is shown with circles so this complete circle is professionals but then we don't want those professionals to be dancers now what are dancers dancers are square so whatever is inside square let us remove of course all this is not required in the exam you can just observe and mark the answer i'm just trying to make it easy for you to understand using this highlighter and all right you can just go to the required region and get the answer it should not be a musician so what is musician triangle so whatever is in the triangle remove that because whatever is inside the triangle is a musician right so that region has to be removed let us remove it what is left out now only that shaded part what is that 10 right you can see the number 10 inside right so the answer for this question has to be uh, 10 which is option i think there is a error here option 1 is 10 so 10 is the correct answer all right so here is the last one look at the question in which of the following diagram uh, in, in the following diagram the boys who are athletic and are disciplined are indicated by which number so boys which are athletic and disciplined are indicated by which number and uh, the representations are given right rectangle is boys so where is the rectangle here is a rectangle right so rectangle is boys so this is boys then we know that circle represents athlete athletics so this is athletics right then the triangle is girls so this is girls here right triangle and square shows discipline right this shows discipline so what do you have to find out we have to look for boys boys who are athletic and are disciplined so boys is a rectangle now boys who are athletic and disciplined that means it should be a combination of rectangle circle as well as square it should be common to both uh, all the three rectangle circle and square so what is inside the rectangle is only 10 6 2 3 1 now it should also be inside circle so rectangle and circle if you include it is are you able to follow if you only look at rectangles if you only look at what is inside rectangle there are different possibilities 10 6 3 is inside rectangle 2 is inside rectangle 1 is inside rectangle but we want that portion to be inside circle also because boys must be athletics now what is inside circle here see 6 3 and 2 are inside circle but 10 and 1 are not inside circle so 10 and 1 get eliminated then what is inside square is also required because we want boys who are athletic and are disciplined right so whatever is inside square should also be included what is inside square only two is inside square here right three is not inside square right three is outside so three is eliminated six is also eliminated what is left two so two has to be the answer option two all right so this is another way of doing it right i mean i was trying to share it show it to you earlier but this is also one approach so just take rectangle first whatever inside rectangle then, then eliminate the remaining ones right keep eliminating the remaining one because after that i want 
it should be a part of circle. So whatever is not inside circle, remove it. Whatever is not inside square, remove it. Finally, whatever you are left with will be the correct answer. So the correct answer for this one is option two. And likewise, many other questions can be asked. You can say, you know, boys which are athletic but not disciplined. Right? Let's take one more example. The question says, uh, boys, boys who are athletic but not disciplined. Right? Which number shows or which of the numbers show that boys are athletic but not disciplined. So boys means rectangle. What is inside rectangle? 10, 6, 3, 2, 1. Who are athletic? Athletic is shown by circle. So what is inside circle? Only 6, 3 and 2. So 10 and 1 get eliminated. But they should not be disciplined. Right? Who are not disciplined. Not disciplined. Now you see discipline is shown by square. But we want the boys not to be disciplined. So whatever is inside, inside square should be eliminated. So 2 also gets eliminated. Now what are we left with? 6 and 3. So we can say both 6 and 3 shows boys who are athletic but not disciplined. Right? 6 is boys. 6 also shows athletics but not disciplined. Likewise 3 is boys. 3 also shows athletics but not disciplined. Of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, there should not be any overlapping between uh, triangle and rectangle here because triangle shows boys and uh, sorry, triangle shows girls and rectangle shows boys. Strictly speaking, the question as such is not 100% uh, correct because how can you have an overlapping between triangle and rectangle, right? There should not be any overlapping between boys and girls. So three year actually shows that these boys are also girls, which is not correct. However, this is the previous year question. Anyway, with respect to the given question, what we have got is correct. Boys who are athletic and not disciplined. Uh, boys who are athletic and disciplined is shown by two. Two was the earlier answer. But for this question, the answer should be six and three. So now you can say the answer is six and three. So this is how you go for it. Just try to focus on what is required. Focus on all that uh, which has to be overlapped and keep eliminating the remaining things.